A wonderful afternoon to a wonderful audience. I, Minha Thavrani, hereby welcome you to the session of OCLF 2020. Our respected guest for today is Mr. King Shok Nath. He is an author and journalist who served the Times of India for 24 years in senior positions in Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, and Hyderabad. A postgraduate in economics from Delhi School of Economics. He is the author of many books, including the biographies of Narendra Modi, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Mohan Bhagwat, and Nidaji Subhash Chandra Bose. His latest book, A New Silk Road India, China, and the Geopolitics of a New World Order, will hit the bookstand soon. He is also the recipient of the Prem. Prem Bhatia Memorial Prize for coverage of Gujarat events. Today, he'll talk about how China wants to dominate the world and at the cost of India with moderator Mr. Sanjay Jo, who has a strong experience in the arena of marketing new concepts and products effectively, set up new branches and made them perform in short period of time, commended and recognized on numerous occasions for delivering positive results. Found out at Nije for companies, products and developed strong client relations. We are pleased to hear you both. Over to you. A very good afternoon to all of you. The second day of the Orange City Literature Festival. It's a, it's a big honor for me to uh, get the chance to be a moderator for uh, Nagji. Uh, Neha has already told you everything about him. There's so many things that we would like to hear from him. Uh, uh, Naksa, welcome to the Orange City Literature Festival, first of all. Thank you. Thank you. Naksa, the most important question and the burning question and the most interesting question nowadays that is going on is China. Now, what is China up to? You know, there's a lot of confusion. There are a lot of news, there are a lot of internet, YouTube news, there are a lot of channels talking about it. But I think uh, you would be the best person to you know, guide us, to make us understand what exactly China is up to and why does it want to dominate India after being the culprit of the COVID birth. So put some light on it, sir, so that we all are very clear on what exactly China is up to. Yeah, sure. Actually, I've been interested in China for the last few years and was trying to write a book on China. But now the book is coming out. I had written one half draft which around 2012, but now I again rewrote the draft. So the book will come out very shortly. The point is that you may have noticed that about two months ago, China attacked parts of Ladakh. I mean, it was, a, it was not a full-fledged attack, but they were attacking parts of Ladakh and trying to take away those parts. In fact, they are in occupation of parts of Ladakh. Now, the question to be asked is, what is there in Ladakh that interests China so much? Because Ladakh, as you know, is in the North, in North Kashmir and it's an icy land. So what is there in Ladakh that is of such great interest to Chinese? So we set about exploring that. Then we realized that in 2001, there was one China-Pakistan economic corridor which was started. This corridor started from a new port which is in Balochistan. This was a new port in Balochistan from where these Chinese were building a road through parts of Pakistan and ultimately going into China. Now the western part of into western part of China, as you realize that China is a huge nation, and the sea front of China actually is on the eastern springboard, that is near Shanghai, etc. It is very far from there. So they wanted an easier way to China through the new port. And so they started from making this road. This road is through Pakistan. But the road actually is for the benefit of China because it will go through and road and rail links will go from Pakistan into China through high mountains and therefore it will lead to a lot of exports into uh, into China and vice versa. 
So it is to develop the western part of China, which is far away from their sea, because it is very far from Shanghai, where the sea is for eastern part of China. So that is the idea. This road has now almost been completed. Now the road, as you know, passes through Pakistan occupied Kashmir, which is technically Indians, India's. So it is a disinterest of China to ensure that the road is protected and they have a, and they have easier access to Ladakh, etc. So that is the idea about the new road. So the CPEC. So that is the idea. So that is why they want to be very careful about the road. They want to protect the road and and uh, when the road passes through road passes through parts of Pakistan, they have to ensure that it is not attacked from India. Ladakh is at a height and Aksai Chin, which is part of China but was part of India, is even at a higher height. So the, the Chinese government wants to ensure that this, these parts are protected and they are not in the artillery range of Indian armed, armed forces and that is why they want to take away parts of Ladakh. If they take away parts of Ladakh, then that CPEC will be protected. They also want to protect Ladakh for another reason because Ladakh as you know is geographically a part of Tibet and all the major rivers, at least 13 major rivers which pass arise in, in Tibet. Rivers like Indus, Satlej, Brahmaputra on the other side and Yellow River in China and all pass through these places. So the rivers which pass through the western part which are going into the Arabian Sea, many of them pass through Ladakh or near Ladakh and that is also China wants to have a complete grip. So that is why they are taking up fresh cousins with India to protect A, that road, B, the rivers will pass through that. That I think shortly will tell you in brief what it is, exactly what we are trying to do. But there is a resistance also from Baluchistan and there is resistance from India. And I also have uh, uh, heard in the news that they are going to stop the rivers that come to India and, you know, uh, instead of all-out war, they would try to um, uh, have a war of, you know, making us die thirsty. Yeah, true. They want the waters because all the waters start from the Himalayas and and basically they start from what is called Tibet. And so they then come downstream, whether it is Brahmaputra which moves eastwards or the Indus which moves westwards or Satlaj which also moves west southwestwards. Some rivers also go to China, Yellow River and all, so they want to control the waters. So, uh, Tibet is as much important to nature naturally as North Pole and South Pole. Tibet is in the top of the top of the world. So, that's why they want to control Tibet and through Tibet the water flows which uh, go into these countries. That is the interest. Because we don't understand now. Otherwise, if we sit here, we will not understand why they are doing these funny things. Correct. Why the Chinese are uh, trying to fight the Indians. But this is the reason. They want the control of the resources. Correct. So they, they also control the CPEC, China, uh, uh, China, Pakistan Economic Corridor and all the national resources. Also. Right. Uh, our Honorable Prime Minister also had visited uh, Ladakh previous day, about, uh, about two weeks back. And he has also given a stern warning uh, that you know India will not give a small piece or inch of land also. But uh, the speculations that Ladakh, uh, you know, China has already come into India through Ladakh, quite a few kilometers inside. So is it is this true or is it just a political opposition party stunt? No, I think that even Mr. Modi had agreed that some parts of Ladakh have been occupied by China. And they don't want to leave those parts of Ladakh. We have no idea to check that information with Ladakh is itself on icy land and the parts there may be have captured maybe on the border. So it's not easy to go to Ladakh. It's not easy to go to the mountains of Ladakh. But I assume that this could be correct. Yeah. We already had a war with China uh, 
previously and uh, you know their famous slogan that that they used to shout across the borders was hindi chini bhai bhai correct correct so, correct so they have never uh, lived up to the bhai uh, so called name so what are they exactly planning then i don't know what exactly they are planning but let me go a little back and tell you the story when india became independent in 1947 and china became a communist country in 1949 so it was seen as the rise of the new of new forces in asia 1947 nehru india and 1949 mao in china so uh, mr nehru extended his hand of handshake friendship to china and say that we are both new nations so let us work in tacit and in alliance but i think he made a great mistake because while the nehru was saying indo china bye bye but however the, the mr mao had very different opinion of india mr mao was not at all friendly towards india and he had a reason he thought that you know there were the opium wars in the 19th century a lot of opium had been exported into china by the by the europeans the europeans wanted the riches of china and they wanted to buy commodities cheaply from them some goods which the european countries were not producing so these were tea and porcelain and now they thought they wanted to buy the tea and porcelain but the chinese emperor who were there would not sell it to them very cheaply so they said gave us gold and diamonds but the, 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 they were not able to give that so now the the british and the european powers thought there is another way of getting into china why don't we sell them opium so that opium would make them weak so the east british east india company actually grew opium in different parts of india including bihar bengal and madhya pradesh and exported that opium to china and there are also a lot of private companies also doing that including the house of tatas so this opium entered into china through canton and other ports and made the total official dam of china uh imbibe opium so as a result of that that opium spoiled the culture of that country and later the opium wars surf fought and after the opium wars were fought the chinese went chinese actually were defeated were very the chinese were very angry and they burned the ships and warehouses of the british companies but in the war they lost so the british has entered china and then demanded compensation which they had in the form of shanghai shanghai used to be a very very small place before the british went in and when they went in it became a big city so first after the opium war the british were able to enter britain uh, enter china and don't forget that was on the basis of opium and that opium came from where that opium was grown in india so the indians could argue that look we are a very dependent country and that opium was taken from india we could do nothing but mao did not mao did not buy that argument he said the opium came from india therefore you are responsible for that it's not that he stated it openly but this is what exactly went on in his mind number one number two after as i said shanghai and all these parts became part of uh, british gain control over them they were the chinese by uh, by their physical stock are very small people and to start up uh, and to ensure that there was hard tough administration the shiny of uh, the british brought in soldiers from punjab from our punjab the sikh so they were sikh soldiers in shanghai and they were tough guys because the chinese are very small and the sikhs are very burly and tall so that is why also, uh, mr mao from his childhood had a hatred for indians and in when china became independent china became a communist country in 1949 he realized that he had a very poor opinion of indians but contrary to that as you say mr nehru had a great opinion of chinese he thought both china 
and India were troubled by the Europeans and they could now join hand and they could be Hindi, Chinese, bye bye. So that's how the whole phrase came about. So whereas Mr. Nehru was friendly towards the Chinese, the Chinese from the very beginning were well, not at all friendly with the Indians. But then our diplomacy was so poor in those days that we did not understand. And one reason for not understanding is that a lot of Mr. Nehru's advisors were communists and Marxists like Mr. Krishnamanan, who was his foreign minister, who was a communist, and they had joined Nehru's cabinet. So they were influencing Nehru. But uh, so they were giving him a very soft line towards China, were saying China is our brother. But then the Chinese themselves, the Mao Zedong himself, had a very poor opinion of India, which Mr. Nehru did not realize. And therefore, the first war with China came in 1962. Before that, as you know, when Tibet was not part of China, when China became a nation in 1949, but uh, due to historic reasons, the, the 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 Chinese always thought that Tibet was there. They had a rightful, they had the rightful right to get over, uh, get into Tibet, and then Tibet became uh, their part. And when Tibet became their part, actually Indian government said yes, yes, and gave gave Tibet away. And that was the greatest mistake that we ever made. Because before that, Tibet was an independent nation which was dependent on India. Because India has two embassies in Tibet, in Lhasa and one more place. And uh, India was running the foreign affairs of Tibet because Tibet was a very backward country and all the help to Tibet was coming from India. So we gave over Tibet and when you gave over Tibet, your borders came close to China because in the in the beginning, the Chinese were far from India because Tibet was the country which separated India from China. We actually gave, gave away Tibet to them. And with that, the Chinese set came home, came very closer. And as you are aware, they attacked India in 1962. I don't know what was the question you asked. I forgot. By the time I was giving the answer, I actually forgot what exactly. It was, it was the same that you explained. Hindi, Chini, Bhai, Bhai. Uh -huh. The slogan that came up. So, Hindi Chini Bye Bye was a false slogan. We were trying to become Bye Bye with them, but they were not trying to become Bye Bye with us. Okay. That's and that is why Tibet is retaliating with India now because uh, India gives a lot of uh, um, uh, help and revenue to Tibet, I suppose. Yeah, because now what happened was that Tibet now went to China. Before that, Tibet was an independent country. So if it was an independent country, if we could have supported it militarily, it would have remained an independent country and all the rivers of the world emanate from there. So, and anyway, as, it's like China, and as, it's, as I told you, uh, Tibet could be a buffer land between India and China. Correct. But we all talk of the great foreign policy of Mr. Nehru, but never see that this is the biggest blunder he ever made in his life. Another very interesting question that comes in the uh, in people's mind is the there are a lot of news that there is some some agreement signed between you know Congress and Jinping and uh, a lot of different speculations are there. What exactly is it? What exactly has Congress done with China? I don't know what they have done because Congress Party by itself cannot sign any agreement with the country because Jinping is the president of China. And Congress party cannot sign an accord with them. So what is it? I have no clue. This also does not find a place in my book, let me tell you. Because I don't know of everything which we have supported. Now, the, another, another very interesting question is, uh, the Indian government has started banning a lot of apps of China. They banned it about six months back, about two weeks back, they banned another 47 apps. So will this hit China or there will be no different, no, no change? Let me try and give a longer answer going to the background. Now China is a very determined country and it's got plans to do exactly what they want to do. And as Indians and as because we are adept at English language, we don't know Chinese. So we have no, uh, no idea about how the Chinese mind works. We have no access to Chinese newspapers. And even if Chinese newspapers some of us would get 
will not be able to know the language. The Mandarin language, which is the main language of China, is such a difficult language. It's a pictorial language. We would have no clue about what they are saying. Whereas Indian language and even European languages or English are much easier, so we can learn them. So we have no clue about how doctor in China. But as you know, China doesn't have any democracy. So possibly from what I can make out, they decided that some parts of China will produce some goods and these goods will be produced cheaply and even if they are not produced cheaply, they will be exported very cheaply to countries. So I think China has been increasing its exports and selling to India and other parts of the world at below market prices. So imagine this, in China, the Chinese will not get that good, but that good will be exported to India at below market prices. This sort of thing cannot happen in India because India is a democracy. So the Indian government will not allow that. But in China, this is a part of state policy by which you sell goods and which to the foreign markets at a subsidized price. And that is what they have been doing. So Indian market, as you know, has been flooded with Chinese products. This includes cell phones and this includes other electronic commodities and this includes even things like toasters, bread toasters, etc. And at one point of time, I think they were even selling safety pins to India at cheap yes. yes. So we have become a, we have become, we have tolerated the Chinese goods. Now, if you get a good cheaply and you are an individual, you are not talking on the behalf of ideologies, then you'll want to go to the market and buy the cheapest product so long as it serves your purpose. And that is exactly how the Chinese have got into India and that is exactly how they have sold their apps. Now, if first you are selling goods to India at such a cheap price, so that the Indian consumer has become a slave of them or become addicted to those products. Now, after some time, if you want to withdraw that product, the, 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 the Indian consumer will feel the pain. And that is precisely what is happening with these apps, I think. So, Indian <coughs> consumer will find the pain because they have got used to those applications. That's what I think. Right, and I think the one of the most famous was PUBG, and just two days back I heard the news that they are relaunching it again from some Indian company or something. Yeah, they'll probably relaunch it by uh, renaming it to something else. You may have banned PUBG, but you won't have uh, banned Shamji. So somebody starts the product and says his name is Shamji, then what will happen? So Shamji <laughs> will come to the market. <laughs> Another thing is that uh, China has given birth to. Uh, the dangerous COVID, and it has been uh, across. It has been spread across the world. Don't you think now China will feel the pinch as people are started? You know, they'll start banning China left, right, and center. The people are banning now because they are so dependent on Chinese products. They have become. China also knows that. That is why it has created a syndrome of dependence on China. China is actually exporting so many goods and services to all over the world, especially underdeveloped world. So where is the question of their banning? For instance, in Sri Lanka, they have made a port. In Burma, they have started a port. They have made huge roads. They want to countries like Greece and Italy and given them a lot of loans. So they have formed airports, roads. So this is the whole Chinese game. Make all the countries around the world our, what do I say, become our partners, junior partners, by giving them a lot of loans. And with their loans, infrastructure is built, like in Pakistan, in Mauritius. So, with Chinese money, those countries are building infrastructure for their own, because those countries need the infrastructure, but they don't have the money. That infrastructure benefits the poor. So that is exactly what the Chinese are doing. So the only country who has resisted is the India because India has not joined this uh, this plan, as you know. I think so, that is the, I yeah, I think that's the exact plan because uh, you take Pakistan, you take Sri Lanka, you take Maldives. These are the countries which have, you know, uh, slowly and steadily China is going to uh, buy these. And one of the example, live example, is now Pakistan, who actually owes China so much that 
in in a span of 10 years i think uh, this will be a part of china well they will not be part of china but they will become a uh, sort of soft partner of china now pakistan, this alliance between pakistan and china is something that indians have to be scared of because china is a strong country but pakistan is not such a strong country but the pakistan one thing pakistan has that it has got an insight into india because pakistan was a part of india till 1947 so pakistan is a good insight into the indian mind so they are able to infiltrate into the indian culture and they will come up with weird plans so pakistan will take uh, the chinese will take the software support from the pakistan and then ultimately it is possible that china on the north and pakistan on the western side can actually uh, together if they come together there will be a major trouble point here in the past we have heard of chinese war and then we have heard of pakistan war but we have never heard india fighting both pakistan and china together or that is exactly a possibility which can take place in the future and about which we have to be uh, about which we should think about and you see pakistan was a, a part of the us alliance earlier but now that is broken so they want money so they are now dependent on the chinese and the chinese are pumping a lot of money in the in through this policy of cpc china pakistan economic corridor the roads they are building a port also and there will be a special economic zone and when huge roads are built through pakistan major transportation ways so small small industries can come up everywhere so pakistan is in real danger of uh, morphing and becoming a part of china in that not in that sense pakistan will always remain a separate country but become a totally dependent dependency of china and this is something as indians we should think of as you know that chinese as the pakistanis are now making very very weird trouble when india became independent all the 550 indian states they were there were given the option of joining either india or pakistan and one of the states was in gujarat called junagadh junagadh the he had a sultan so that fellow wanted to join pakistan and he was also having double mind but the prime minister of that state was shah nawaz bhutto the father of zulfikar ali bhutto and he convinced can convince the nawab to join pakistan but of course he could not join pakistan so ultimately he fled from india now today some 60 70 years after independence pakistan government has made an amendment in its map and included junagadh in its territory of course technically it makes no difference that you write junagadh is in pakistan but look at the audacity of it the pakistan map shows that junagadh which is part of state of gujarat and the district is part of gujarat as part of pakistan so you are you are you are not trying to act funny and trying to undermine india by doing such but that is exactly what they have done so this also basically i think pakistan and china together and both will try to unnerve india so the question is this so this is issue now this uh, the road that we talk about cpc china pakistan economic corridor that mm. goes that is going through ladakh and then baluchistan right no no not ladakh and then baluchistan it will start from uh, Balochistan, because the new port has come up in place called Gwadar, which is part of Pakistan since 1958. From there, it will go northwards and ultimately pass not through Ladakh but through what is called uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, through Gilgit and Baltistan, which is technically supposed to be part of India but has never been part of India. It passes through Gilgit and Baltistan, and then there's a then it crosses the Karakoram and enters into China. so it passed so therefore india is not pass up not agreeing to it but then they have formed the road so gilgit baltistan because now it this brings me to the question of jammu and kashmir in the matter of jammu and kashmir also there is a lot of ambiguity now because jammu and kashmir was given a different treatment by the indian government has made a lot of difference there and now this government has actually broke up that thing and uh, article 370 has been removed and now sir it's a attempt is to integrate uh, jammu and kashmir into india that will create problem and as you know farooq abdullah said 
So Chinese can intervene. Why is he saying Chinese can intervene? You are actually trying to tell that they will intervene. They will intervene in India. It's all nonsense. Because basically you are wanting to create a situation where there is no peace in Jammu and Kashmir and there's a lot of insurgency there and you're inviting China. So these are the problems. And so this will lead to a lot of problems as we shall see in the coming years. Uh, one of my last questions that I would like to ask you is where do you see this whole journey of uh, you know CPEC in the next five years? Will there be a war or what is the uh, future like? The future of the CPEC? CPEC and the war that uh, we talk about. Basically now Chinese are not only lined up against India but lined up against a lot of other countries like USA also. And uh, basically, they want to control the waters of the Indian Ocean. Now China has become so ambitious and it has become so wealthy that now it not only wants to control the Himalayas, it also wants to control the Indian Ocean. And as part of the Pacific strategy, the US government proposed that we should have a maritime alliance with the US so that we can jointly <coughs> safeguard the Indian Ocean. And we are also having the support of Australia and Japan into this whole, whole thing. So it's going to be a much bigger thing. So India and China will not only be opposing each other in the Himalayas, but also in the Indian Ocean. Now Indian Ocean brings you very close to your home. Now China is entering into alliances with Burma. <laughs> then down to other African countries so that the entire area has become part of Chinese influence. So that is something India has to be very careful about. And I think if the same thing has happened in Australia. As you know, Australia about 15-20 years ago started allowing Chinese to export, export their capital into that country. <laughs> so now they have become totally dependent on Australia. Today there is understanding that the Chinese dominate the Australian economy. So, okay. so now Australia is very, uh, what should I say, very gung-ho in uh, opposing China. And there is India, there is Japan also, which is a rolled enemy of China and the US. So there are four where lands can take place. India, Japan, Australia, and the US. So that they can save the Indian Ocean. And it's called the Pacific strategy, I think, of the US. So China is a major danger. So China, when we think of China, we think of the 1962 war and think China and India fighting each other on the Himalayas. But now things have changed. Chinese are wanting Pakistan and they will ascend. They are wanting Burma and they are wanting Bangladesh and they have also convinced Nepal. Nepal is a country with which India had very good relations, but we were very surprised that a few years, a few months ago, even the Nepalese are giving support to the Chinese. <coughs> so, so we have no, now we have two fronts. One is the Indian Ocean, the sea, maritime routes, and also the northern Himalayas. So China, I think, is a real trouble for India, and we must all think with open minds how to deal with China. And a lot of our intellectuals don't think so, I must say so. They think China is a great country and we should become friends with them. But it's not a fact whether you want to become friends. I have a lot of journalist friends who work in China because Chinese are very smart people. They have opened up English newspapers. So a lot of Indian journalists are working there. A couple of them are my friends. I keep talking to them on internet and all. So they are all gung ho in praise of China. They said this conflict with India is not reflected in the Chinese newspapers. So there is no hostility among the Chinese for the Indians. That is because there is no democracy in China. You don't know the entire truth. So Chinese people, India and China are having tussle in Tibet or sorry, Ladakh. But that is not reflected in the Chinese newspapers. For them, things are hunky dory to so the Chinese. So, when Indians stay there, no Chinese is asking them about this. So, the Indians also feel very happy about it. But this is not a fact because it's also possible because there's no democracy in China. So, under the cover of this, the Chinese can 
to attack India. That's what I'm saying. So we have to be very careful of them. We have to be very careful of them and understand because Indian companies are working there. The mm -hmm. Western interests also Indian companies are working there, making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. think they say think China is a great country. Mm -hmm. A lot of Indian workers are working there. Indian journalists are working there. They also think China Chinese is great. Mm -hmm. So the real danger for India is something which is not reflected, and that is the point I'm trying to make. And we have to, we have to, because in China is not India's friend. Please understand that. I think next, uh, this is a real eye opener that you have told us. We knew actually that there is a there is a threat. There is a, uh, and I think this uh, I, this platform gives me an opportunity to appeal to everybody that you know ban Chinese products. The more uh, you get used not to use Chinese product, used to not using Chinese product, the better it is for India in the future. And. Uh, the, the the listeners are the part uh, the people who are watching us today i think should uh, spread this message that china is a dangerous country and the only way that we as civilians can uh, fight with china is to ban their products and uh, i think uh, naksar thank you very much for your uh, you. feedback and you know the lot of things that uh, we never knew and because of your uh, talk with that we had with you today a lot of things have been clear Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naksar. And Neha, over to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, on behalf of OCLF, I sincerely express our gratitude towards your acceptance for the session and knowledge shared with us. Lastly, special thanks to the SGR Knowledge Foundation. You can now join our next session, which is about the journey tradition and culture of food. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty years of existence. Two universities. Twenty-three educational institutes. Offering 137 courses. Rice Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.